Hi, this video will demonstrate how to use breakout rooms in a live session on Zoom. The first thing you'll need to do is to make sure that the breakout room setting is on um, in your advanced settings. So you'll need to go to zoom.com or zoom.us, either URL will work. Go ahead and sign in. Make sure you're signing in with Google and your CompTIA-USD.net account. On the left side, um, you'll have a menu setting. Um, if your window is very small, um, the menu setting might be up at the top. So if you don't see it on the left, look up here, there may be a drop down menu. Usually when you sign in, you'll start in the meetings menu. What you'll need to do to change the breakout room settings is to go down to settings. If your window is wide enough, you'll see um, another menu here within the settings. You want to make sure you're in meeting um, in the meeting tab and then you can come down here to in meeting advanced. If you don't see this sub menu, um, don't worry because this is one long scroll and so you can just kind of scroll all the way to the bottom. Um, but either way, you can you can either scroll or click in meeting advanced and then you'll want to find um, the second setting which is breakout room and you'll want to make sure that this setting is on. And so once it's on, it says allow host to split meeting participants into separate smaller rooms. Um, these are not separate meetings, but essentially um, just different sub rooms, um, if you will, that you still have control over as a host and that you'll be able to move in and out of um, at your own will. Um, and, and the participants within those rooms can also request your support if you're not currently in that room. Um, so it's a really great way to um, break up the monotony of kind of a, a virtual whole group live session, um, but also allow your participants, your students, um, to then talk to each other in a smaller group, work together more collaboratively um, on whatever it is that, that you have them um, assigned to working on. Um, this is a little bit more of an advanced setting, um, but if your students are, number one, making sure that they sign in um, to the to their Zoom accounts prior to logging in or joining the meeting, um, you will be able to assign participants prior to the meeting um, being scheduled or prior to the meeting starting. Um, normally, um, this doesn't always work out because most people honestly won't sign in to Zoom um, prior to joining the meeting. You do not have to sign in to join a meeting. Um, so you'll take the time to kind of set this up and then um, it won't work out the way that you plan. So I usually um, ask my students or ask my clients to come in about, you know, five minutes early, um, you know, maybe have some music playing or, you know, have just like a, a little bit of a more unstructured or informal conversation going. They're saying hello to each other. And as they're entering the room, I am putting them in their breakout rooms. Um, and I also have those rooms, of course, pre-planned out um, with a little list next to me um, or on my computer screen so that I can see exactly where I want each person to go. So once the setting is on, um, you can go ahead and start a meeting. You'll be the host. You'll start with your video on. Um, and then once you're in the meeting and your students have joined, um, this is what it may look like. Um, I don't have my camera on, but this is the uh, host, if you will, up here in the top right. Um, I do have my screen on gallery view. It's what I prefer to have it on. So if you're in a meeting where you're planning to start a breakout room session, you don't want to wait until the point where you start the breakout rooms um, to prepare. As soon as your participants start coming in the room, you want to start assigning them to a breakout room. Um, so you'll need to come down here. Once you've turned on the breakout room settings, you'll see breakout rooms in the toolbar at the bottom. Um, first, if your window is really small, you can see I, I've kind of shrunk mine a little bit um, intentionally so that I can show you a lot of people get confused because they don't see breakout rooms at the bottom. Um, you might need to click on more um, and then whatever doesn't fit on the right side will get buried um, under more. So the chat, record, breakout rooms, etc. Um, and you'll see if I expand my window out a bit, um, those settings come right back to the toolbar. So, so, so to set up my breakout rooms, I'll click on breakout rooms. And the system always automatically um, starts with two rooms and it will always automatically want to set up the rooms for you. And this is a little bit like a, a Russian roulette. It's just kind of whatever the system decides at that point um, is what you'll get. Um, and as an instructor, it's probably not the best idea. I think it's even worse than you know having students kind of choose their own groups um, at times. So you, you're going to want to either choose your homogeneous or heterogeneous groups um, and have those set up 
ahead of time, um, depending upon whatever activity it is that you're going to have the students do when they get into the room. Um, so I always click on manually because I want to control um, where my students are going. Once I click on manually, I can decide how many rooms I want to have them go into. Um, I have five participants here. I don't want anyone by themselves, um, so I'll keep it at two rooms. But you can always increase the rooms um, to however many you would like. Um, again, I'm going to use two rooms, and I'm going to manually set who is in each room. Once I have these two settings ready, I click on Create Breakout Rooms. Um, if you want to change your mind, you can always come down here and click Recreate, and it will allow you to manipulate those same two settings again. So you hear, see here that I have um, Breakout Room 1 and Breakout Room 2. Um, and you'll see if I decide that, oh, I want three Breakout Rooms, and I hit Recreate, then my third Breakout Room gets here. I can also delete the room. Um, it may be fun if you, you're playing any kind of game or you have kind of reoccurring groups. Um, if the students have named their group, um, you can always add it here. So your super students are going to be here. Maybe this is the super sophomore group, etc. Um, so, and this name will go at the top of the breakout room so the students will see it and they'll be able to identify. So once I'm ready, um, I will click Assign. And you see here when I click Assign, all five of my participants will pop up here. My name doesn't pop up here because I'm the host. Um, but then I can decide maybe I want um, Daniel, Kevin, and Sarai to be in Group 1. And then when I go to Group 2 and I click Assign, you'll see only the other two students are left. Now let's say I change my mind and I want to switch uh, Miguel and Kevin. I can click Exchange, and I'm going to exchange Miguel for Kevin. I click on Kevin, and they've switched. Or I decide, I think Daniel um, really needs to focus, and he needs a little bit more um, support, and he, you know, he usually talks too much to Miguel, so then I'm going to move um, maybe Miguel um, back over to the Super Sophomores. Um, so that you can always manipulate this. And even if I close this, um, and now you can see that the students are still in the main room. Um, and this is why I usually do this kind of in the very beginning of the meeting or um, usually after I open the meeting um, and I have kind of a whole group discussion um, to get the students kind of warmed up and loosened up and, you know, uh, willing to participate. Um, as they're talking, um, I will start to to form the, make the breakout rooms. Um, but again, as soon as your first participant comes in, you can start to move or assign that person to the room. So again, if I want to switch anything, I can always just open and close the breakout rooms. So I'll open them back up. I can click on options if you want to have some advanced settings. If you want to move all of the participants into the breakout rooms automatically so you can control when they actually move, um, for students, I would click this. If you're working more with adults, um, you may want to leave that off. And what happens is when you open the breakout rooms, um, a little message will pop up on the participant's screen and it will ask them if they want to join the room. Um, but for students, um, you know, we don't want them to kind of get confused or um, waste valuable time and so I would just automatically move them when you're ready. Of course you would let them know beforehand. Allowing participants to return to the main session at any time. Um, personally I, I don't think that that's a good idea and um, if there's a serious issue um, they can always log out of the meeting. Um, it is highly likely that if you have breakout rooms going on you will not be in the main room. Um, you will be floating around to the different breakout rooms. Um, so the main room, there will be no one there. And so you don't want students to kind of leave the assignment or leave the activity that they're supposed to be doing. And so I would not allow them to return to the main session. You'll want to keep this on. Um, this is the countdown after closing a breakout room. Um, so when you as the host decide to close the breakout rooms, um, you can give the participants a countdown um, to let them know that the breakout room is not only closing, um, but it's not an automatic kind of jerking them back into the main room. It does give them um, a window of time where they're kind of closing down their conversation um, or their activity um, so that they are ready to move back into the room. 
So once you have this all set up, you can close it out. Um, you can continue with whatever whole group activity um, that you're doing, explaining what they're going to be doing in their breakout rooms or finishing whatever discussion you have for them. Um, and then once you're ready for the breakout rooms, you let them know, um, especially the very first time, um, what you'll want to do is let them know that they're going to go into a room, that you will come around um, the first sweep um, that I always do, especially when students are new to Zoom or new to breakout rooms, you're doing some type of new feature, you always do a technical support sweep. Um, so you let the students know that they're going to put them, you'll put them in the breakout rooms um, and that you'll come around to each group in the beginning um, just to check in and make sure that everything is working, they can hear each other, they can participate, they have their chat open, um, and they have whatever link it is that they need um, in order to do the activity that you've assigned. You always want them to keep their chat open um, just because if someone doesn't have whatever link or activity, you want to be able to share that file or that link with them um, so that there's no excuse of they you know, can't find whatever it is they're supposed to be working on. Once you're ready and you let them know that breakout rooms are starting, you can click on breakout rooms again and click on open all rooms. You'll see here um, there's a message that the participants are joining the breakout rooms and you'll see that they've slowly started to disappear. So we lost Miguel. Um, of course, I don't have actual students um, logged into a live session right now. Um, what I actually have is my different devices in the house logged into this live session. Um, and so um, I had to switch devices, um, but I wanted to show you this um, because it happens that you know, students, either their technology fails and they get kicked out of the meeting and then have to come back in, um, or they may be a little bit late to the meeting, and so you're in breakout room session um, and other students are already in breakout rooms, and then you have someone new coming in. And you can see over here um, that I have Miguel um, is in the waiting room. I haven't admitted him yet. Um, um, I have the setting um, that will notify me when someone new comes into the room. Um, if you happen to be in one of the other breakout rooms, you will also have a notification pop up on your screen that someone new has come in. Um, and so what you would just need to do is um, you can always travel back to the main room to greet the, the student. Um, but what you would need to do is firstly um, admit them into the room. Once they're admitted into the room, and you can hear the doorbell, that lets me know, and that's a, one of the advanced settings, but that lets me know that the student has entered. Um, once they're in the room, I can assign them um, to whichever breakout room they were in before they got kicked out or um, whichever um, that they were listed um, when I created the breakout rooms beforehand. Um, and then you can see that Miguel has now joined the breakout rooms. Um, so as the instructor, you don't want to just sit in the main room um, while everyone else is, is working. You want to make sure that you're facilitating the activity and checking in if they have any questions. Uh, one thing to note, I think especially during these times, um, but in any type of distance learning platform or um, approach to education, um, it's not the same. People or, or students can't engage in the same type of social dynamic. Um, so you always want to give a little bit of a buffer because when they get into a buffer of time and um, because when they get into the room um, and, and they get into a smaller group, you'll notice that a lot of them that are not willing to participate whole group will start to talk um, and especially when they're with their peers. And so you want to give them a little bit of leeway so that they have that social time um, to kind of get acclimated to their group, to say hello to each other, ask how everything's going, etc. And so you always want to plan that in um, to your breakout room sessions. So, um, but again, I would want to, I wouldn't kind of sit out for those five minutes. I'm still going to go around and um, check on technology, but I, but I will go in and realize that they're just going to be kind of doing a little bit of socializing. Um, and then at the point where I think that, okay, everybody's technology has checked out, um, then I can send out a message that says, okay, let's get started. Um, so from here, when I click on the breakout room um, settings or controls, I can choose to join either one of these rooms. Um, and you'll see there's a, a little bit of a, a in-between space um, as you're moving. And so let's say I want to join the super students. I click on join. They all ask me yes or no. I click yes. And you'll see this little window thinking. And now I've popped in um, into the breakout room. I'm muted in the Zoom room, um, but normally I would have my, my camera on um, and uh, my sound on. 
Now when you go into each of the breakout rooms, your settings automatically go back to um, kind of the default settings. And so I would have to click gallery again. If I'm going to hang out in there, um, I might click participants and chat um, just so that I can see everyone is there. We're either muted or unmuted, check on um, the video, etc. Um, you know, I ask them how everything is going, if they have any technical issues, can they hear each other, do they know their assignment, etc. Okay, great, I'm going to go check out the other room um, and I'll be back to check in. I can click on breakout rooms again and you can see here it's going to ask me if I want to leave this first meeting, um, this first room, or if I want to join um, the second room. If I click leave the first room, the room that I'm in, it's going to automatically push me back into the main room. Or I can just simply jump from breakout room one to breakout room two, which is the super sophomores. I click yes. The system is thinking and now I'm in the room with the super sophomores. And again, you'll see it goes right back to the default. It actually stayed in gallery, uh, but I might need to click on participants or chat. Um, again, just if I want to communicate and not interrupt or, um, you know, maybe even leave a little bit of comment if they're working um, and I don't want to interrupt their flow of their conversation, everything is going well, um, I might want to give a little bit of feedback in the chat box down here. Um, it's always a good way so that you're not interrupting the flow of their conversation if everything is going well. And again, you'll likely have more than two groups, um, so you can click on breakout rooms again and then you would be able to leave this group or to join group three or group four, et cetera. Um, I wanna take this, this time now also to point out a couple of things. Um, the first is that you'll see that the super sophomores, um, their title will be up at the top. Um, this is really helpful if you are um, have any type of hyperdoc or Google Slides or Google Doc that everyone, all of the groups are working out of. Um, you can label the different slides or the different parts of the document um, that each group is supposed to be working. Um, so that way you can see um, or they know exactly what they're supposed to be doing. The other thing I'd like to point out is that even though you're in one group, you can broadcast a message to anyone in the other groups. And so what I did is I opened up the breakout room settings again, click on the arrow. The cursor is already here. Um, you know, you can put, I would like to give them a uh, countdown um, to make sure that they know that they should be working or um, maybe everyone should be on question two um, or should be starting question two, etc. When you click broadcast, it automatically sends the message out to all of the participants. You won't see the message pop up, but the participants will. Um, now I'm the host, so I can't see their controls, but at the bottom, uh, when they're in breakout rooms, there's actually another control, um, and it'll say ask for help. And if they click on ask for help, um, it will actually pop up on your screen that one of the other groups um, is asking for help. And so let me actually try that. I'm going to go back to the first group. And then I will have Miguel ask for help. And so I clicked ask for help or the, the uh, participant did. And then it'll say to invite the host to their breakout room. And so when I do that, you can see I get a message as the host and it says Miguel and super sophomores asked for help. And I can tell him um, later and I can go over there in a minute if I'm in the middle of something with the super students or I can tell the super students I will be back in a couple minutes and I can click join breakout room and it will automatically move me back to the super sophomores. So when you are ending, you always want to let your participants know that um, the meeting is ending or the breakout room sessions are ending um, just because they'll be in, hopefully, in the middle of a collaborative discussion or activity, etc. Um, so you want to click broadcast. Um, at this point, um, to signify to all of the groups that we're kind of winding down, I will myself um, leave the breakout rooms um, and go back into the main meeting room. That way I can also um, set my main meeting room back up the way that I want it, make sure my participants are open, my chat is open. Um, you can see the chat followed me even from the breakout rooms. Um, the chat is shared by the main room and all of the breakout rooms. Um, and then once the one minute um, you know, is kind of up, you'll hit close all rooms. It says here that the participants have been given 60 seconds. 
You can also see down here that I can see the countdown. Um, and when the countdown is ended, then all of the participants will start to um, come back to the room. While it's counting down, I also want to show you that even, even though I haven't really moved it around, you can move this around. Um, so if it's in your way, if it's you know blocking, you want to see your participants, um, you can move this window around um, so that it's not um, too much in the way. If your participants are ready ahead of the, the end of the timer, um, they do have the option of leaving the breakout room and joining back in. Otherwise, if they wait, um, you'll see they'll come right back to the main room all at the same time when the timer ends and you'll be right back in speaker view. I can close this out, click back on gallery view and continue with my debrief of the activity um, or I've, if I've selected specific groups to share out a particular part of their activity, um, then I can start to um, call on those groups to share. I do want to point out that the breakout rooms do not change um, for the meeting. Um, so if you're, you're planning to do two kind of breakout rooms, you can click on breakout rooms. You'll see the groups are exactly the same. You can send everybody right back into the breakout rooms and they'll go right back where they um, originally were. Click on it again, close them out if you're done with that activity, um, and it will call them all back into the room. And again, some students may choose to come back to the breakout rooms early. Um, they are not going to wait for the 60 second timer. Um, but if they do wait for the full countdown, um, then once the 60 seconds ends or whatever limit that you've set, um, then all of the participants will come back in. Lastly, if you are having more than one breakout room session and you do want to recreate the rooms, you don't want them to be in the same groups, um, you can click, again, if you have it closed, click, up, click breakout rooms, um, you can click recreate and you click on recreate all rooms. And then from there, um, it will not reset the rooms, um, but what you can do is you can start to move them around um, to the different rooms as you see fit. And then once you're done, or if you wanna add a room, um, et cetera, maybe you wanna to talk to one of the students on their own, then you can add a room and move the student. Sometimes I'll do that. Um, if I'm recording, I'll move into a breakout room just to make sure that I'm not recording any kind of, um, you know, more confidential conversation. Um, but um, you can use one of the breakout rooms as kind of a meeting room. Or sometimes if I have students that didn't do the prerequisite work, um, I have a quiet room where they are then just kind of sitting in a room where I can go in and check on them and they're supposed to be um, engaging in um, whatever work that they missed. Um, if it is any type of work that they have to produce something, I will put that into a Google Doc, Google Sheet, Google Slide, um, so that I can also monitor them during the breakout rooms and um, see that they're working. Okay, breakout rooms are a more complex um, feature in Zoom, but they are very much worth the effort in learning how to use. Um, your students will gain a lot out of it, um, and your live sessions will be much more productive. Please let me know if you need any support.